The National Gallery of Victoria, commonly referred to as the NGV, is located within the Melbourne Arts Precinct of South Bank and is the oldest public art museum and pre-eminent art publisher in Australia. The creation of NGV was an outcome of the findings of the Fine Arts Commission. Early colonists believed in the progress and value of education through art and maintained a vast collection. NGV currently houses an extensive collection from Europe, Asia, America and Oceania. Works by European masters and new acquisitions by upcoming and established contemporary artists also form part of the collection. The NGV was first established in the Melbourne State Library building in May 1861 to collect, conserve, develop and promote the state's artworks and bring art to the people of Victoria. It grew decade by decade until it reached capacity and was finally transferred to the Roy Grounds new custom design building which opened in 1968. Since December 2003, the NGV has operated across two sites, NGV International on St Kilda Road and the Ian Potter Centre at Federation Square, which was designed by Lab Architecture Studio. Today we will be focusing on the first NGV site commissioned in the 1960s by Roy Ground and partially redeveloped in the 1990s by Mario Bellini. Leading up to the 1960s commission of NGV, Melbourne saw a new architecture style emerge. Melbourne was experiencing a flourish in housing due to the rising population and increased the need to live centrally. This new contemporary style became a popular topic with newspapers and magazines regularly covering the architecture and its architects. New houses were presenting immediately recognisable contrast to the typical existing suburban home. These houses consisted of fragmented forms, sparse decoration, seemingly flat roofs, contrasting colour and texture, and were often rotated on their blocks to optimise sunlight or retain notoriety of their inhabitants. Large structures of commercial, educational and public nature were being commissioned and featured similar aesthetics to the domestic dwelling with an emphasis on large scale, rational planning, climate and comfort control. The main influences for architecture of this time were filtering in from the US and Western Europe but the philosophical controversies abroad regarding the modernist architecture had not yet reached Australian shores. Architects constantly introduced new and untried materials. They sought simplification of structure and sparseness of detail. In the late 1950s, commercial buildings such as schools, universities and other public spaces began to be commissioned after an absence of nearly 20 years following World War II. Architects such as Bogle and Benfield and Bates Smart were engaged to design significant structures that reiterated the presence of modernism in Melbourne. It was during this time that a master plan for the Melbourne Arts Precinct was released, featuring a large space dedicated to the future site of the National Gallery of Victoria, as it was then known. The plan also allowed space for future construction of a circular spire, a theatre and a concert hall to the north. Roy Grounds, born December 1905, was one of Australia's leading architects of the post-war modern movement. Grounds attended University of Melbourne Architectural Atelier in 1927 to 1928 and took night classes at Brighton Technical School, where he developed an interest in Bauhaus and architectural modernism. The following footage of Roy Grounds was captured in 1968 by renowned Fairfax reporter Margaret Maloney, where he discusses particulars of the project as well as his background and split from Romberg and Boyd. Good morning, my name is Margaret Maloney and I'm from Fairfax Media. Uh, this morning I am talking with acclaimed Australian architect Roy Grounds. Roy, hello. Hello, Margaret. So you have been working on the NGV Commission for a while now, haven't you? Yes. The NGV opened to the public last week on the 20th of August, so it's been about eight years. I understand that Eric Westbrook, the director of the National Gallery, accompanied you on a three-month tour of Europe and America to view some of the International Gallery designs. Did this trip help shape your inspirations for the design of NGV? Yes, it did. I was particularly inspired by the geometry of the 18th century Palazzo di Capamonte in Naples, Italy, and the medieval Castello Sforza in Milan. Yes, that's right. I have heard it described as a renovated neoclassical palazzo or castle sitting in a moat. Am I correct by saying there are also oriental overtones, such as the floating roof and its upturned eaves, the 
timber griddled ceilings and the courtyards with the fountains and bamboo? Yes, that's true. Certain elements were inspired by 18th century Italian architecture. There is a clear geometric structure and order. It is a rectangular prismatic volume pierced by three square courtyards. This arrangement sits on a podium that tames the site's irregular shape and profile. But regionalism was more important to me, so I placed more emphasis on local materials, including local bluestone, bush-hammered concrete and Victorian ash. Yes, your former practice grounds Romberg and Boyd, which you formed in 1953, often explored regionalism in architecture. Can you explain to us what conflict occurred with your former business partners that resulted in the separation? The initial design ideas for NGV that were discussed in our practice caused strain on our creative differences. Robin was also increasingly focused on writing and Frederick was still developing his personal aesthetic. The split was amicable and I am so happy to have personally maintained the NGV commission. You have been hailed for being a key influence in bringing the modernist movement to Australia in the 1930s. How do you feel about that? <laughs> I'm not sure about that, but my work has been described as functional modernism architecture. I do like to work with open, planned, regionally responsive spaces that may be reminiscent of what people describe as the modernist movement. NGV is also sure to be placed in this particular category. So in the 1930s, well before your NGV commission, um, I believe you lived and worked in the United States and lived in both New York and Los Angeles, and that was as a set designer. What did you do when you returned? I returned to Melbourne in 1932 and joined Jeffrey Newton in partnership. I also work independently on several apartment blocks, including Clendon Corner, Moonbria and Quamby Apartments. Yes, the Quamby Apartments in Turak, they certainly do have Californian references in their Lanai terraces and Sundex. So getting back to the NGV, what are your thoughts looking back on the overall experience? Well, it has been an amazing journey creating the gallery. I've been able to work with talented craftsmen and artists such as Grant and Mary Featherston and also Leonard French. I'm so happy with the result. We were actually just awarded the RAIA Gold Medal for 1968, which is an absolute honour. It was also completed on time and within the budget. Yes, budget is always very important. Well, Rory, thank you so much for your time today. It's been great to learn a little more, not only about NGV, but about you as well. So thank you. You're welcome, Margaret. Following Ground's passing in 1981, the Melbourne Arts Precinct, including the NGV, continued to thrive as a prime destination for locals and visitors alike. Overcoming controversies regarding the form and functionality of the building, NGV was slowly embraced and affirmed its position as one of the most significant public buildings to have been constructed in Melbourne. In 1996, it was decided that the gallery needed to be redeveloped to accommodate its growing collection. So in 1999, NGV closed for a four-year, $168 million renovation. Italian architect Mario Bellini, along with Melbourne-based Meteor 3, were announced as the winning architects of the St Kilda Road redevelopment following an international invite-only competition. Bellini's submission competed against some of the best architects in the world, including Arata Izazaki, DCM and Pei Cobb-Fried. The gallery was to be extended and redeveloped. Plans were also laid at this time for the future site of the new gallery at Federation Square. Some of the most admired elements of Ground's original NGV design were preserved during the redevelopment, including the spectacular Leonard French stained glass ceiling in the Great Hall, the gallery's entrance arch, and the redesigned water wall. The gallery reopened on Thursday the 4th of December 2003 and had increased exhibition space at the St Kilda Road location by 25%. Although the redevelopment was received with mixed reviews from critics, Visitors to the gallery have consistently risen from year to year. NGV recorded over 2 million visitors in the 12 months over 2013 and 14, ranking it as the most visited art museum in Australia and the 24th most visited in the world. Building on this 153-year history, today the NGV is a dynamic, vibrant and essential community asset. It celebrates Australian architecture, 
and contributes to the cultural, educational, social and economic well-being of Victorians.